my Zorro. I should also mention that we are flying at 100 milliwatts and 150 hertz. The telemetry packet's set to one over two, and I did that to be comparable with my previous tests. Okay, so you're probably wondering why am I only using 100 milliwatt of power? So running at one watt is definitely better performance. It has 100% LQ all the time and the RSSI is much lower, which should be no surprise. However, there is a downside and that is running the transmitter at two watt right in front of your face is directly affecting your FPV feed. Now you can see this in the HD0 and you will see this in analog, but you might not see it in DJI or Walksnail, but don't fool yourself into thinking it's not happening. DJI and Walksnail is just covering it up, but that is in fact lowering the performance of any FPV system. And your DJI and Walksnail are then going to crash much earlier if you're getting additional interference all the time. So I wouldn't really recommend you run at one watt unless you really, really have to. However, do you have to run at one watt? If you ever get in a situation where you're going to fail safe, your FPV feed has been gone for a very, very long time. So it begs to question, do you really need to use one watt ever? Personally, I will never use it. I'll probably stick to 100 milliwatt or at max 250 milliwatt. But again, if you're using a double transmitter, that's actually 200 milliwatt and 500 milliwatt. So you're gonna be using a lot of battery from your controller and you're gonna potentially be causing interference in your FPV feed. Just something to think about. Okay, so just for the record, here's how I have my antenna set up. I have one on the front here and then one on the arm sideways. And the idea is that the nulls kind of cross but this setup seems to work pretty well for everything I do. A little bit of sparkles. Uh, PBS crossfire with telemetry actually causes the interference. Hmm, weird interference. I don't know what that is. Oh, interesting. So I'm just moving my controller. I'm using my, moving my transmitter closer to my head right now. Look at that. Wow. So I almost wonder if my transmitter is causing the issue. That's weird. So I put my transmitter way far away. So watch, I'm going to move my transmitter up and now it's right near my head, getting a lot of interference. That's interesting. Okay, so I'm not necessarily saying you shouldn't use the full one watt on your transmitter. And honestly, using high gain directional antennas like I use for my long range stuff might make the problem significantly more noticeable. But if you're only using Omni antennas, I can't imagine a scenario you're gonna get yourself in where you're gonna have FPV feed and losing your controlling. Now, theoretically, the best solution is to use dynamic power. So it goes up to one watt if it needs it. But I've only had two fail safes with ELRS and both were when using dynamic power. So I'm a little, hesitant to use that mode. However, I've heard this was a problem in older firmwares and that the current firmwares are really stable and dynamic range works great, but I'm just more comfortable using either fixed 100 milliwatt or 250 milliwatts if I really am pushing it. So as far as ELRS is concerned, I've used two different transmitters. This is just a standard 500 milliwatt transmitter by Beta FPV, and this is the new Gemini system, which actually goes up to one watt with two different transmitters, so technically it's two watt. But I never use anything above one watt, and I have 100% LQ all the way up here in the mountains. But either way, test this out, see if you have any change in the performance of your video feed, and let me know, because I'm super curious to hear what you guys think. I've been experiencing this for a couple years now, and I decided to finally make a video about it. Now, if you are getting an RX loss or a failsafe, and you still have video, that means there's a problem with your control link setup. Most likely the antenna's on your quads, but possibly the antenna or transmitter on your actual controller. So you need to figure out what that problem is before you start just adding more and more power because that's just covering up the problem. So anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. Stay tuned. See ya.